Now you're a serious person. <laughs> uh, I'm a little bit of an idiot, and I'm going to ask you some dumb questions. Uh, so I do uh, I do martial arts. Uh, so like jujitsu, there's I've wrestled my whole life. So let me <laughs> let me ask the question. Um, you know, like whenever people learn that I do any kind of AI or like I mentioned robots and things like that, they say, when are we gonna have robots that, um, you know, that can win in a wrestling match or in a fight against a human? Uh, so we just mentioned sitting on your butt, feet in the air, that's a common position jujitsu when you're on the ground, you're a uh, you're, you're down opponent. Um, like what, how, Difficult, do you think, is the problem? And when will we have a robot that can defeat a human in a wrestling match? And we're talking about a lot. Like, if, I don't know if you're familiar with wrestling, but essentially, um, not very. It's basically the art of contact. It's like it's because you're 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 picking contact points, and then using like leverage, like to uh, off balance to to trick people, it's like you uh, make them feel like you're doing one thing and then they they change their balance and then you uh, switch what you're doing and then results in a throw or whatever. So like, it's basically the art of multiple contacts. So- Awesome, that's a nice description of it. So there's also an opponent in there, right? So, so if- Very dynamic. Right, if you are wrestling a human and, uh, are in a game theoretic situation with the human, that that's still hard. Uh, but just to speak to the, you know, quickly reasoning about contact part of it, for instance. Yeah, maybe even throwing the game theory out of it, almost right. like a, yeah, almost like a non-dynamic opponent. Right. There's reasons to be optimistic, but I think our best understanding of those problems are still pretty hard. Um, I have been increasingly focused on manipulation partly where that's a case where the contact has to be much more rich. Um, and there are some really impressive examples of, of deep learning policies, controllers, that, um, that can appear to do good things through contact. We've even got new examples of, of you know, deep learning models of predicting what's gonna happen to objects as they go through contact. But I think, the challenge you just offered there still eludes us, right? The, the ability to make a decision based on those models quickly. Um, you know, I have to think though, it's hard for humans too, when you get that complicated. I think probably you had maybe a slow motion version of where you learned the basic skills and you've probably gotten better at it and and um, there's there's much more subtlety, but it might still be hard to actually, you know, really on the fly take a you know model of your humanoid and figure out how to how to plan the optimal sequence that might be a problem we never solve well the repeti the i mean one of the most amazing things to me about the we, we can talk about martial arts uh, we could also talk about dancing it doesn't really matter it's too human um i think it's the most interesting study of contact it's not even the dynamic element of it it's the like when you get good at it it's so effortless. Like I can just, I'm very cognizant of the entirety of the learning process being essentially like learning how to move my body in a way that I could throw very large weights around effortlessly. Like, and, and I can feel the learning. Like I'm a huge believer in drilling of techniques and you can just like feel your, I don't, you're not feeling, you're, you're feeling, um, sorry. You're learning it intellectually a little bit, but a lot of it is the body learning it somehow, uh, like instinctually. And w whatever that learning is, that's really, I'm not even sure if that's uh, equivalent to uh, like a deep learning, learning a controller. I think it's something more, it feels like there's a lot of distributed learning going on. Yeah, I think there's hierarchy and composition. Yeah. Um, probably in the systems that we don't capture very well yet. Uh, you, you have layers of control systems, you have reflexes at the bottom layer and you have a you know, a system that's capable of you know, planning a vacation to some distant country, which is probably, you probably don't have a 
control or a policy for every possible destination you'll ever pick, right? Um, but there's something magical in the in-between and how do you go from these low-level feedback loops to something that feels like a pretty complex set of outcomes? You know, my guess is, I think I think there's evidence that you can plan at some of these levels, right? So uh, Josh Tenenbaum just showed it in his talk the other day. He's got a game he likes to talk about. I think he calls it the pick three game or something, where he puts a bunch of clutter down in front of uh, a person. And he says, okay, pick three objects. And it might be a telephone or a shoe or a Kleenex box or whatever. Um, and apparently you pick three items and then you pick, he says, okay, pick the first one up with your right hand, the second one up with your left hand. Now using those objects, those now as tools, pick up the third object, right? So that's down at the level of, of physics and mechanics and contact mechanics that, um, that I think we do learning or we do have policies for, we do control for almost feedback, but somehow we're able to still, I mean, I've never picked up a telephone with a shoe and a water bottle before and somehow, and it takes me a little longer to do that the first time, but most of the time we can sort of figure that out. So yeah, I think the, the amazing thing is this ability to be flexible with our models, right. um, plan when we need to use our well-oiled controllers when we don't, when, when we're in familiar territory, um, having models. I think the other thing you just said was something about I think your awareness of what's happening is even changing as you as you get as you improve your expertise, right? So maybe you have a very approximate model of the mechanics to begin with, and as you gain expertise, you get a more refined version of that model. You're aware of of muscles or or uh, balance components that you just weren't even aware of before. So how do you scaffold that? Yeah, plus the fear of injury the ambition of goals of uh, excelling and uh, fear of mortality. Let's see what else is in there as the motivations. Uh, 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 overinflated ego in the beginning, uh, like, and then a crash of confidence in the middle. All of those <laughs> seem to be <laughs> essential for the learning process. And, all th and if all that's good, then you're probably optimizing energy efficiency. <laughs> yeah, right, so we have to get that right. Uh, so, um, you know, th there was this idea that you would have uh, robots play soccer better than human players by 2050. That was the goal. Uh, world basically uh, was the goal to beat world champion team uh, yeah. to become a World Cup, beat like a World Cup right. level team. So, are we going to see that first, or um, a robot? If you're familiar, there's an organization called UFC for mixed martial arts. Are we going to see a World Cup championship soccer team that have robots or a UFC champion mixed martial artist uh, that's yeah. a robot? I mean, it's very hard to to say one thing is harder, one some problem is harder than the other. What probably matters is um, who 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 started the organization that, that, I mean, I think RoboCup has a pretty serious following and there is a history now of people playing that game, learning about that game, building robots to play that game, building increasingly more human robots, it's got momentum. And so if you want to uh, to have mixed martial arts compete, you better start your, or, the start your organization, organization now, right? Um, I think almost independent of which problem is technically harder because they're both hard and they're both different. That's a good point. I mean, those videos are just hilarious. Like, uh, especially the humanoid robots trying to, um, <laughs> trying to play soccer. I mean, they're kind of terrible right now. I, uh, I mean, I guess there is robo sumo wrestling. There's like the robo one competitions um, where they do have these robots that go on a table and basically fight. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe. First of all, do you have a year in mind for a uh, robo cup? Just from a robotics perspective, seems like a super exciting possibility that um, like in the physical space, this is what's interesting. Uh, I think the world is captivated. I think it's really exciting. It's um, It inspires just a huge number of people when a machine beats a human at a game that humans are really damn good at. So you're talking about chess and Go, but that's in the, in the world of uh, digital. I don't think 
machines have beat humans at a game in the physical space yet, but that would be just... You have to make the rules very carefully, right? <laughs> I mean, if, if, if Atlas kicked me in the shins, I'm down and, uh, you know, and, and game over. So there's, you know, it's, it's very subtle on yeah, I think what's the, fair. I think the fighting one is a weird one. Yeah. Cause, uh, you're, you're talking about a machine that's much stronger than you, but yeah, in terms of soccer, basketball, all those kinds Even of soccer, things. right? I mean, as soon as there's contact or whatever, <laughs> and there's, there are some things that the robot will do better. I, I think if you really set yourself up to try to see could robots win the game of soccer as the rules were written, the right thing for the robot to do is to play very differently than a human would play. It's, you're not gonna get you know, the perfect soccer player robot. You're gonna get something that exploits the rules, exploits its super actuators, its super low bandwidth um, you know, feedback loops or whatever, and it's gonna play the game differently than you want it to play. Yeah. Um, and it, I bet there's ways there's, I bet there's loopholes, right? We saw that in the, in the DARPA challenge uh, that, that it's very hard to write a set of rules that someone can't find, uh, a way to exploit 